Now the templates themselves are just made from plastic and I think if you're, you know, sufficiently motivated and artistically inclined, you could certainly make something like this yourself. But for me, it's just a lot easier to buy one of these kits. Um, these still have the paper on them. It gives you an idea of what the shape is. So you could buy each one of these have right now. You can also get a few things to make this process easier. For instance, they sell a big plate like this for your router. And what that does is makes the process of balancing your router over this opening as you hollow out the material just makes it a lot easier because you've got a lot more support with a big old, you know, what is this, probably 12 by 12 base like this. Also, you may want to consider the bit. Now, you're going to need a pattern bit to make this. It has a bearing on the top and the cutter head is here on the bottom and that will ride around the template and hollow it out. The thing is, you need a special bit. Now, you can go with a standard pattern bit that has a square edge on it. The problem is it's going to create a real tight, sharp corner. It, with a bowl, it looks a little bit nicer if you have a rounded corner. So these bits are, are sort of specialized for this task and create a nice interior corner that's a little bit more pleasant to look at. So the stock for this, according to the instructions, they recommend at least two inches thick. Think about it. The thicker it is, the deeper your bowl is going to be. If you go less than two, it may start to get a little bit fragile and it may be more of a tray than a bowl, but that's perfectly fine too because if you're just putting candy in it, it doesn't really need to be all that deep. But of course, you could go deeper if you wanted to. So the way I'm going to get the stock is, I mean, there's a number of ways you could do this. If you don't have really wide or really thick stock, you're going to have to glue the pieces up to get the size that you need. You may also look into possibly like a platter blank that someone would use for turning and to turn a big platter you might be able to find stock with the dimensions that you're looking for but most likely you're gonna have to glue up from smaller pieces for me what I have is some leftover stock for my trestle table project and I'm lucky enough that this stuff is wide and can handle the entire ghost in one shot without having to glue multiple pieces together now of course to do this even if you glue them up you're still gonna need to flatten these pieces after the glue up goes together and you guys know I talk about this hybrid approach to woodworking using power tools and hand tools. Well, that's critical in this part because you can't joint a board this wide. Okay, so let me show you the technique that I use to get to this point where I'm ready to glue these two pieces together. Now what I've got here is a piece of mahogany in the bench ready to go. And what I want to do, the primary goal here is to get one side flat enough. I'm not looking for absolute perfection here. If you're good with your hand planes and you want to do that, there's no reason why you can't go all the way with the hand planes. I just want to get it flat enough so that I can get accurate registration on my planer. So I've got my number five plane here. And before I do any removal of wood, I need to know what I'm up against. So a straight edge will help me determine what I'm looking at. Basically, I want to sight from the side here like this and see what we're dealing with. So when I place the straight edge across this way, I could see I've got some low points in here over on this side, low points over here, a little bit of a low point there. To run it across this way, you can see we're high in the middle here, pretty comparable, we're high in the middle here. And if you have a set of winding sticks, which I don't really have, but I've got a piece of wood that I know is straight and I've got a straight edge that I know is straight, I could use those to determine if there's any twist by sighting down from this angle. And as you look from that end, these winding sticks will essentially exaggerate the twist. And you can see we definitely have some twist to deal with. This end looks high. So the first thing we need to do is remove some material from this back corner to remove the twist from the board. Now I know what a lot of you are thinking, you're relatively new to the sport of woodworking and you're thinking that you don't have the hand plane skills to accomplish this. Well guess what? Neither do I, but I'm not going to let it stop me. The point is, I'm not really trying to get a perfectly flat surface here. What I'm going to do is try and get a surface that's stable so that I could pass it through the planer and let the planer do the work. So here's the thing. First thing I want to do is start removing that material. And what I have here is a number five. Quite frankly, you can use just about any plane you've got in your arsenal. Just set it so that it's taking a relatively aggressive cut. And you probably don't want to use your smoother here because it'll take you forever. Okay? As long as I start removing some of the stock, we're headed in the right direction.
Now I'm not going to show you this entire process because this does take a little bit of time, but I want to get through the main primary points here. So once we've removed that, uh, the twist, we can start focusing on getting this thing so it sits nice and stable in that planer. And the way I'm going to do it is not necessarily by aiming for flat. What I'm going to aim for is slightly concave. If I could remove a little bit of extra material from the middle, all I have to focus on is my outside edges to make sure that those are nice and straight and there's no twist. And if that's the case, I could then flip this puppy over, send it through the planer, perfectly stable, no problems. So this is why I say you don't need to be an absolute expert in hand planes to get this done. Okay, so set your plane for an aggressive cut again. And we're just going to plane some stock here from the center. It's rough going here at first, obviously, but we'll get it after a few passes. At this rough stage, don't be afraid to go diagonal and cross grain. Now I've got a sufficient amount of material removed from the middle and when I place my straight edge on here I can see we've got a nice gap down there that tells me we've got a concave surface. I know that there's no twist because I've checked it with my winding sticks. So really all I want to do at this point is make sure that the edges are relatively smooth and flat so that this thing rides through the planer nice and smooth. So just a couple passes here. right on the edge like this, that's really all you need and that's going to register perfectly on the planer. So now that you get the idea for how the pieces are prepped, I'm going to go ahead and glue these two together. We should have cut these parts <laughs> to the same size before doing this, but I never said I was smart. So my glue has had plenty of time to cure, and now we can trace on the shape of our little ghost. Nothing really tricky here, just place it wherever you think it looks good. If you see any flaws in the surface, you want to avoid those. And you want to make sure that you realize this is just the inside of the bowl. You're going to need a lip on the outside. And, you know, I guess you can make it as thick as you want, but, uh, you know, you probably want to give yourself at least a half inch there, just to be sure. So we don't want to go too close to the edge. I was worried about this line here, but, you know, it is what it is. I guess I could always angle my ghost this way to avoid it if I wanted to. Yeah, let's do that. Right about there. Just going to take a sharp pencil and trace the inside shape. 